And we can actually make what's called a solubility curve that looks at how temperature relates to the amount of solute you can dissolve in a certain amount of solution. So this is a bunch of solubility curves, very colorful. A solubility curve is going to look at the relationship between how much, you see here, grams of salt in 100 grams or 100 milliliters of water and the temperature. So how much you can dissolve is on the y-axis. How hot your water is, is on the x-axis. And you'll see for many solutes, the warmer the solvent is, the more you can dissolve, but that doesn't go for everything. You'll notice here's this interesting cerium compound, and in fact, it gets less soluble as you heat up the solvent. Some things, the effect is drastic if you look at potassium nitrate, but other solutes, the effect is not nearly as strong. Sodium chloride really doesn't change a whole lot throughout this whole temperature range. So using this, we can find basically three areas on the solubility graph. I look at a particular solute and I have to decide if I'm under the line so say for potassium chloride here, which is the blue line here in the middle, down here, all this area is below the line. I could be on the blue line itself. Sorry, my slightly wiggly line here. Or I could be above the line in this area up here. And those all have a different meaning. So let's see if we can break that down. Unsaturated solutions. An unsaturated solution still has room to dissolve more solute. So it has less solute than a saturated solution. So an unsaturated solution is below the line on the graph. A saturated solution contains the maximum amount of dissolved solute. If I try to add any more, no more is going to dissolve. You can kind of think about it like a sponge. A saturated sponge is completely full of water. It won't soak up any more water. A saturated solution is full of solute. And that is the function of the line in our solubility curve graph. That's showing us where the saturated solution is. Now, under very controlled circumstances, you can form a super saturated solution. And this is not simple to do. If you get a super saturated solution and you disturb it, a, you jostle it, a particle of dust falls in it from the sky, it will immediately crystallize and form solid until it reaches saturated. So a super saturated solution is abnormally full. It is over the line and it's not a usual situation. Unless a problem states that you're making a supersaturated solution, you shouldn't assume that that's what you're going to do. So let's do a little practice. I have two quick practice problems here reading a solubility curve. I have, I'm gonna look at the lead nitrate line here, which I've highlighted in red for us, because that's what it says in the problem. We have 80 grams of lead nitrate and it's at a temperature of 30 degrees celsius so in order to read to do this problem i'm going to look at the axis for 30 degrees 
and I know that a full solution at 30 degrees should be right on the line. That's a saturated solution. And I know I must have a saturated solution because there is salt sitting at the bottom of the beaker. So not all of it is dissolved, it's full. So if I do that, I can go from 30 up to the line, and then I can go from the line over to the x-axis to find the amount of lead nitrate. So it looks like the saturated solution of lead nitrate contains 65 grams. So I can say here a saturated solution would contain 65 grams. But this problem tells me that there were 80 grams measured out and put in the beaker. So I had 80 grams total and 65 grams of it dissolves. So I should have 15 grams of lead nitrate sitting at the bottom of my beaker. So let's try a, a similar but maybe a two-step problem. Okay. I have a saturated solution of lead nitrate, so I can use that red line again, in 100 grams of water. So I know I'm working with the right graph here. And it's at 50 C. So I'm going to find out what happens at 50 degrees. So I go up to the line. And then I can go across here to the y-axis. And I'm going to estimate that that's about 85 grams because it's a saturated solution sitting right on the line. So if I cool the solution down to 50C or 20C, then I can take this arrow and I'll put it here at the 20 and I can see that I should not be able to dissolve 85 grams at 20 C. In fact, it's a considerably smaller number at 20 C. So if all 85 grams stayed in solution, I would have formed a super saturated solution because I would end up if all of it had stayed in solution, I would end up up here above the line. But it does not say we make a supersaturated solution in the problem. So we never assume we're going to make a supersaturated solution. We always assume that we're going to just stay at a full solution, a full saturated solution. So if I come down to 20 degrees, at 20 degrees, it looks like I can only have 52 grams or so in solution. I'll estimate that as 52. So out of that 85 total grams, 52 of it is still in the solution. The rest of it has to go somewhere. It can't stay dissolved. It doesn't just become a gas and disappear. It ends up crystallizing and precipitating at the bottom of the beaker. So I could say here, what will happen as the solution cools is that 33 grams of solid form on the bottom of the beaker. And I do that using this solubility curve.